More robust than a typical scarf, a wrap can provide a laid-back look, jazz up a formal dress, or keep your shoulders warm. My guest Mary Malari joins me again to apply her magic to sewing fabric wraps. Welcome back, Mary. Nancy, it's great to be back with you. This time to show a rectangle of fabric we all can create functional to fashionable wraps. Let's begin with a simply shaped wrap that could be paired with jeans or a little black dress, depending on the fabric you choose. Named the Rita Wrap, this casual version is made from soft, plush fabric and will not slip from your shoulders. All occasion fabric wraps, that's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, making a difference in sewing, quilting, crafting, and needle arts for over 30 years. Amazing designs and Class A needles. During the two episodes on sewing fabric wraps, you're going to see a variety of fabrics used. And Mary, you have two excellent examples of really not traditional fabrics used. And the first is a plush fabric. Yes, this is really nice and soft, and it's easy to work with when you know the tricks. Um, I'm going to turn back the corner to show that it's hemmed just with one turnover of fabric, and then we form a mitered corner. And we hold the wrap closed temporarily with buttons that have magnets on the back. Uh, and then our second sample here is more for a dress occasion. Uh, it's aligned, there's lace on the outside, chiffon inside with rickrack trim, and then we have a magnetized flower here <laughs> as well. And you'll see how Mary puts those together. The, the rectangle of fabric that you're going to cut from tissue paper is this, the size measurements are? Uh, they're 24 by 52. And our pattern piece shows that here we place on this edge, the, the pattern is placed on the fold. Mm -hmm. And then there's a cutout section for the neckline opening. Now this is, becomes the center back. That's right, Nancy. So it's kind of just to get your orientation on this. And the main sewing is to finish the edges. Right. Uh, we'll pull this back and then one uh, corner of this will just uh, show that I, I chose about a, approximately a half inch uh, hem uh, okay. thickness and then uh, we'll just put a pin here and then uh, we cross it over here with another hem but this is a little bulky. Sure. So what I would do would be to cut out a small square here in the corner so that then we can make a fold miter uh, more easily and, uh, con wi and continue on with the hemp. And because the fabric will not ravel, you don't have to double fold it, just one single fold. Now this is a knit, it's got a lot of stretch to it. So to stitch, here you can see that I'm using a walking foot and the uh, elongated zigzag stitch. I really like both that foot and the stitch for finishing off the edging. Now, you may not have this big a piece of fabric to place on the fold, so Mary, you have another suggestion. Yes, for all of these wraps, Nancy, this is great for your, from your stash. Uh -huh. This piece was only a yard, so I seamed it at what is the center back of the wrap. Now, if we look at the purple one, you'll see that it has a seam, and it, it's offset because we've kind of have the wrap or a little bit off the shoulder, but it, it's not noticeable yeah. at all. Yeah, that's right. It just blends into the fabric. And in closing, let's show our viewers how you have the closure on the, uh, on yes. the wrap. Um, I, here I have uh, a pair of earrings, and I've clipped off the back post. And I have magnets on each side, and they uh, clip together very sure. easily. Put one underneath the fabric and one on top. And there you have the closure for the Rita wrap. Cleverly designed armhole openings give this wrap two wearing options. The first option sports a small, drapeable collar with a longer, graceful length. Or wear the wrap with a longer length above the shoulders and a shawl collar magically appears. You can see why we call this the go-to TWO wrap. Now when Alex was modeling this great wrap, you didn't see the transformation, Mary. It 
flips 180 degrees, but let's That's start right. with the with the first version she showed us. This first view shows the, the smaller collar, and as I turn uh, the mannequin, we see that it drapes quite along in the back. Mm -hmm. And then to change this up, we're going to remove it and flip it, as you say, 180 degrees. So the bottom now is the top, and we'll put this back on and show that uh, the, it's very, there's a much deeper drape uh, here in the front. And the other thing to point out, Nancy, is that the hemming process we use for this one is just like the one we used previously in the Rita wrap. So th this is knit fabric. It's uh, 60 inches wide. You need that width to get the coverage and the drapeability, and the length of the piece of fabric is 42 inches, so that's like a yard and a fourth. That's right, and mm -hmm. I would make sure to cut off the selvage edges for this project as well. Yeah, the heavy edges have been trimmed off, and you have to, you need a little sewing buddy to measure your back width. Right. So uh, between you, shoulder blades. Yeah, that's right, and that uh, might be an average of 15 to 17 inches, something like that. We have the fabric folded in half, meeting the long edges, and then measuring 10 inches down from this the top. From, yes, from the top uh, neckline, what will be one of the neckline <laughs> edges. And uh, then we, we have a mark here. And then we draw a 12 inch line for the length of our armhole opening. Now, we are not really measuring equal distance, but if you measured uh, 16 inches, it would be eight inches from the fold. Yes, our fold is here and that would be eight inches. So that's the first step. And then t we need to cut out some facings or some interfacing strips for our armholes. And this, it was fused over the length, and the length of this is? 15 inches, and then we have the 12 inch space marked also with marks. The next sample has been fused on. Now you can see that you're going to be having, whoop, let me do this once more. Uh, it's fused for the second opening, it's fused into place, and then you're going to pin along the fold. That's right, this is going to be pinned in half, and uh, this is how we proceed then and to... It takes four hands to do this. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> it's best, right? <laughs> so we're going to take this now to the sewing machine. Stitch a three-fourths of an inch seam from the folded edge, which we have here. And I'd like to point out, Nancy, that the red st thread in the center in the 12 inches is a long basting stitch, and I keep the thread tails so I can more easily remove them later. And then cut along this fold. It's kind of magical what happens. I start about an inch above the, the end of the armhole, and I'm going to clip through here. Um, sometimes it goes a little smoother than others. Okay. And I'm following my line, and I'll stop about an inch past. And then... You press it open. Yes. It, Whoops, uh, sorry, we're fighting over this. <laughs> well, these stretchy <laughs> fabrics are sometimes hard to uh, work with. So then you've, d you've pressed it open and at the very top stitched across the end. Yes, a little bit of a triangle for extra strength. And then now I'll take this red thread that I have and pull it out and it's going to then be magically an opening in the fabric. So well, I'm a little just, bit of effort I'm, I'm here. I'm just going to pop that a little bit. You can okay. see there's the opening that would be, again, finish the edges as Mary said, and then you have a wrap to wear long or short. Transform a long, flat rectangle of fabric into a wrap that cascades around your shoulders and gracefully twists at the center. Use knits or woven fabrics. It doesn't matter at all. If the fabric has a distinctive right and wrong side, create a double twist. You get to decide. For this particular project, you need a yard and three-fourths of fabric, and you can get two wraps out of that length. And we have two options over there where we have the knit fabric, and it has the single twist, as you can see, draping in the front. We didn't even need to finish the edges on that because it didn't ravel. And then you have a silk combination, silk uh, cotton combination, which is really pretty stunning, that Mary and looks great. Yes, it does. And we've chosen to have the shiny side showing on this uh, particular wrap. So with this fabric edge that we're showing you, the cotton silk combination, it has two different looks to it. And the edges have been finished with a rolled edge. 
And here's a close-up of using the rolled edge stitch on a serger, just trimming off a little bit of fabric and getting that nice smooth edge. Now, you could also just turn under and top stitch if you wanted to. That's right. I really like this very narrow edge on, on mm -hmm. the fabric for this particular wrap. And so we show how the, we yeah. make the twist. This it's, is the magical part of it. It's folded in half. And I'm going to take this edge and twist it, bringing it to meet the long edge here. And we'll put a few pins in to indicate how we'd sew this together when we're assembling the wrap. And this can be as a really narrow seam, Nancy, for mm -hmm. this particular uh, fabric and uh, wrap. And then I think we can show that um, when this is held up, uh, you can see how that twist develops. Here, let's get, this would be the neckline. Yes, right. And <laughs> and with this twist, you, with a single twist, you have the wrong side or the other right side and the intended right side. So maybe you want to change your mind and show both shiny sides. Sure. Mm -hmm. So then we'd uh, proceed to uh, make another pinning here of our fabric and we're going to make yet one more twist. Yep. So After we unstitch it. There that's we go. right. And we're going to show both the shiny uh, sides of our wrap. And I think then we can look at our model yes. here, which has a double twist, uh, where both shiny sides of the fabric are up. And then I'm wearing another version of the double twist because my scarf has only one nice side. Sure. So it looks, it, it's a lightweight shawl, elegant, and as you can see, with just finishing the edges, doing the twist or double twist, sewing one short little seam that you would just be showing, sewing around the very little edge of the finished edge, you will have an elegant, versatile wrap. On a cool or a partly cloudy day, wear this wrap as another layer of comfort. When it rains, put up the hood. For another option, you can wear this wrap to the beach. Adapted from a beach towel, it becomes a bathing suit cover-up. How's that for versatility? Now fabrics really vary here, Mary, from uh, beach towel to the hooded version is nylon. That's right, this is rip stomp nylon and w we can use any kind of water repellent fabric for this. And the, obviously you're gonna use a big, big, big beach towel, but if you were working or buying fabric for the hooded wrap, you buy two yards and it's 16, 16 inches, inches wide. wide. Right, and the piece for the body of the wrap is uh, 57 inches long and 54 inches wide. Okay. And we have a fold already placed, uh, that, that's how the fabric comes to us. And then we need to make a second fold, and that's uh, to fold actually the whole piece of fabric in quarters. So we have the folded edges meeting the raw edges, and then you just pin mark near the intersection of all these folds. Right. And then we need to find the pattern for the neck hole opening, and we're going to align that on the fold, and there's a, a horizontal line across, mm -hmm. and that will align with the fold of our fabric. So we'll trace that and continue our line uh, of a one inch width all the way down to the bottom of the fabric. And when you made the spa or the beach co towel cover up, you cut this out and then you bound the edges using some knit fabric. Right, and it was really fast because the towel had all the other edges. So let's uh, take a quick look at that. All the other edges are finished mm -hmm. and the other edges are just bound or you could even just turn them under if you wanted to. But if you want to make the hooded rain wear wrap, then we have another piece cut out along that edge. And these are big pieces, you know, 54 by 57. So we have it folded in half. And Mary, you did some trimming before you did the finishing of the edge. That's right. I rounded out the corners because whether you're overcasting on the sewing machine or on the serger, it's just easier to work your way around mm -hmm. a rounded corner. And then I also, after uh, doing all of the surging or mm -hmm. overcasting, I just turn back the edge. And here we have a sample of how you just turn that back. And it's a long seam, but you <laughs> sew all the way around sure. the edges of the fabric. And when you'd open this up, it's big, you know, oh, it's, it's, right. it's the wrap. But it only makes sense, Nancy, if yeah. you're protecting yourself from the rain. So in this area, we're going to add the hood. And the hood, I'll fold this back, 
our viewers can see where it's going to go, but you have some pieces cut for the hood. The first, uh, the, it starts out very simply as a 15 by 24 inch piece of uh, nylon. And then we're going to do a little stitching on the edges. Uh, the top edge here has been stitched and then uh, surged. Uh, the bottom has been surged and then overcast. And we're going to do one other uh, seam. We're going to form a gusset here in the back corner. And we're going to actually sew a three inch uh, uh, sorry, seam Mary. across that. We'll just put in a couple of pins here to indicate that. So you have the you don't have the little point in the back of the hood. Right. And then on the opening, we have one inch wide seam allowances. And then, just for fun, and this is going to be inside the, the hood, we cover that up with some decorative trim. So as we look at the finished hood that you saw us work with, or saw Alex model for us, we found the center, and here's the pin, we put the center of the hood to the center of the wrap, and then just overlap the seams and top stitched into place. It really doesn't get any easier than that. Simple sewing with great results. Start with a pashmina shawl, a rectangle of microfiber plush, or luxurious silk, and in minutes you'll be wearing an off-center wrap. Alex is showcasing an ombre silk that is shaped with a single seam that has an added draw cord. This off-center wrap is the first of our one-seam wraps. This fabric is great and beautiful fabrics, but you can, of course, choose fabrics of your choice and you have a rectangle. I do, Nancy, and there's a single seam and it's stitched here uh, with this, in this case, a three quarter inch seam allowance. And uh, we stop that so that we have a neck opening, uh, of course, and that would vary between 12 inches and 15 inches, depending on how loose and open you like the top of the wrap. Now, this is a smaller piece of fabric, but your original piece of fabric, this is leftovers. Your, yes. your first piece of fabric was? Uh, uh, 20 by 60. So you met the 20 inch ends and then 12 inches down from the fold, you did this three-fourths of an inch seam, but here comes, that's the single seam. You'd finish right. the edges first, but now to do that draw cord, this is pretty interesting. Yes, uh, we, we have cords sewn uh, on the top of the uh, seam allowance area, and they're anchored in here, uh, and then we'll fold this over to show how on the second seam allowance on the other side, we've pinned this down because we're going to prepare to sew it. And then you would sew from the hem around the neckline, just top stitch that seam and also encases the draw cord. And then on our mannequin, you can see that the draw cord has been pulled or you could leave it flat, but it gives that asymmetrical look, but interesting idea. Stretch fabrics with continuous rows of ruffles are perfect choice for this next shawl. The texture of the fabric gives the focal point while you just cut out the patterns and stitch a single seam. Mary, when I see this fabric in the store, I can hardly resist it. Oh yes, I, yeah. I couldn't either. So here's one piece I purchased and I've discovered that uh, there's space between the ruffles and we're going to take advantage of that in placing our pattern. And the pattern shape is a parallelogram. It's 12 inches wide and the parallelogram shape, obviously with that angle at the top. And we're going to place uh, the top edge of our pattern in the space between the ruffles. And then the other thing we need to do, Nancy, is smooth out the ruffles so and, that and when we cut this, it's, uh, they're all going to be facing down. Cut, cut with the ruffle or obviously pin them down and then to cut the next piece, it takes a bit of yardage but you have to do the mirror image. You have to flip it and then position it in another area on the fabric. That's right. And after cutting the two pieces as we've done on this ruffle, yep. mm -hmm. uh, we okay. have, uh, uh, we're ready to sew our single seam, and that's here at the top edge. And just a zigzag st with a st slight stretches in it, and if we look at the mannequin and the seam in the back, it just drapes beautifully oh, because of the hidden. parallelogram, and mm -hmm. yeah, the he seam is hidden because it falls in the ruffles. The front cascades down well and, and because of that angle and a little longer in the front point. It is a very classy way of working with this fabric. 
and you didn't even need to finish the edges. That's really a nice part of it, Nancy. Uh, and it, it drapes, and as long as you're careful in cutting, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a great shawl. So, one seam wonders, using a long rectangle of fabric and making a neck hole opening, adding a draw cord, or using a specialty fabric parallelogram pattern and one seam. The story of the American Quilt Trail featuring quilt squares painted large on barns across North America is the story of one of the fastest growing grassroots public arts movement in the U.S. and Canada. To tell about this folk art phenomenon is author Susie Perrin. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy, Susie. Thank you, Nancy. This is a fun book to read. It's history, quilting, beauty, and tell me how you got started on this. Well, I was actually on a camping trip, and <laughs> I was traveling cross-country from Georgia to Yellowstone in a tent with my dog, and I saw a barn with a quilt on it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, my goodness, what is that? Sure. And the woman who lived there actually told me a little bit about the quilt trail. And then you got in contact with one of the first people that had a barn quilt. Yes, I, uh, in looking into it, I got in contact with Donna Sue Groves, and she's actually the one who conceived of the idea to honor her mother, Maxine, and their quilting heritage. Um, but she actually ended up taking the idea to her community and having them create a, the first quilt trail. And here's Donna Sue's quilt, on wooden quilt on her barn called the Snail Trail. Yes. Yeah, and one thing about the barn, it's funny that Donna Sue said that it was such an ugly barn and she had to dress it up for her mom. <laughs> and indeed she did. She sh certainly did. Now, some of the interesting barn quilts that you have found include breast cancer awareness quilt. Yes, and the one that um, we talked about is one that an entire cancer coalition came together ah. to create. So it has all the names of the people who created it. It was very much a community effort to raise money to actually have mammograms for women in that community. And many states have quilt trails. Oh, yes, about 47 states actually have them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can go, counties have them, and, or as communities. It's, it's fun to get a little map from the Chamber of Commerce or online. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what's another favorite quilt barn of yours, barn quilt of yours? Well, there's one that I particularly love in Ohio that's painted right on the barn doors. Uh -huh. And it's something that an individual artist spent so much painstaking time to create that. It has a lot of dimension. I'm, I'm going to convince my brother that he needs one of these on our family <laughs> farm. I wonder if he would do this. And not all the barn, barns that have quilts are retired barns. Oh, not at all. A lot of them are working barns on working farms. And people do. When you go to talk to them about their quilt uh, barn, the gentleman will get off his tractor and come <laughs> over and give you a tour of the farm. I've learned a lot about barns and how they're constructed. and. Um, and you're touring right now for your second book. Yesterday you were in Iowa? Yes, I was. A beautiful, beautiful day in Iowa. Had enjoyed a wonderful time. And we'll be back in Wisconsin um, in a couple of weeks to see some of the larger quilt trails here. So as you're traveling, y you find most of the barn quilts are a certain size. Yes, they're um, usually 8 by 8 feet. Um, a sheet of plywood is 4 by 8. Sure. So they'll put two of those together, and that's kind of a natural size being 8 by 8. The, the trick for me would be to decide what pattern I'm going to put on the barn. A lot of people say that because there are so many, mm -hmm. and eventually you do have to decide on one. Sure. It's not like your clothing for the day that's yes. going to change tomorrow. Right. Not, not just individuals do barn quilts, but it's a learning tool for art students. Um, yes, there's a wonderful group of kids in um, Kankakee, Illinois, who worked together. They were actually homeschooled, but they had art lessons. Mm -hmm. And they worked together to create an art project. Just a phenomenal, I mean, so many people look at it and say, that's three-dimensional, it's got to be. <laughs> I, when I saw that quilt in, in the book, I thought, uh-uh, this is a quilt hanging on the, uh, on the, on the door or on the, on the barn, but it is dimensions. So they learned not only from the flat, quilt, they put a drape into it. Yeah, they learned kind wow. of the methods that the old masters would have used to create a three-dimensional effect in their artwork. What do you find the most fascinating thing that people say about quilts, barn quilts, as you travel around? Um, I think one of the major things is that barn quilts bring communities together. Mm -hmm. You know, we're so fragmented now and everyone is into electronics and all that sort of thing. Sure. But this is something that kind of brings people back to their roots. And, and so many people have told me, 
I have all these new friends because we paint together. Oh, wow. And it, it enriches their lives on that level that they get to know one another and spend time together. Well, Susie, thank you for sharing with us your barn quilt story. And maybe when you have your second book complete, you can come back and share more adventures of finding folk art and grassroots inspiration on the trail. Thanks so much. I'd love to do that. Thank you. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this program of Sewing with Nancy on Fabric Wraps. If you'd like more information, rewatch this program or many seasons worth of programming. You can go to nancyzeman.com, watch the videos, find out more about the barn quilts and Susie's adventures by clicking on Nancy's Corner. And of course, you can join me on all things social media. You can tweet with me, Facebook, and of course, watch my blog. I'd like to encourage you to come back next time, but for now, Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Mary Malari has written a book entitled All Occasion Fabric Wraps that is the reference for this two-part series. The book includes 14 easy-to-sew wraps and shawls. It's $14.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2813. Order item number MP44, All Occasion Fabric Wraps. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyseaman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding provided by Pellon. <laughs>